Um, okay, so when I create the enemies, uh, I created them with a field called collider name, which is just a, a tag that I put on there so I can double check. I can make sure that this is in particular a specific type of object. So I put a collider name field on the object and I put a, a string in there called enemy. So the very first thing I do is I check to see if other collider name is not equal to enemy, then for some reason we're having a collision event with an object that I don't care about. I don't want to do anything to that object. I just wanted to ignore it. And so I simply return false. I do nothing. However, if I have collided with an enemy, the things that I want to do are I want to remove the arrow from the, I want to stop rendering the arrow, I want to stop tracking it in the arrow list, and then I want to do some other stuff. So let's just walk through it. So the first thing I do is I call display remove, call it on self, which is the arrow. Uh, it's worth noting that I use display remove instead of a lot of people I see them do this. Self, remove self. You know, they've got some, whoops, oh, nuts. They've got like an object, or they got something, and they say remove self. This is one of my pet peeves. Yes, it's completely valid code, but it's totally dangerous. The reason it's dangerous is that imagine, if you will, that we execute this collision handler twice, which could occur. If we don't ignore the collision handler, our arrow, and we don't delete the arrow, or we do something, something could occur where we have two impacts occurring at the same time. That's completely possible. We could hit two enemies simultaneously in that frame, and so this will get called twice. If it gets called twice, and we call object remove self the first time, and then we call it again a moment later, and I mean just like a half a millisecond or whatever period of time that is, it's going to crash. And the reason it's going to crash is because the first call destroyed the display object, but it's still hanging around. It's a Lua object, but now it doesn't have the function remove self. Part of calling remove self removes the function. So if you can imagine, first time through it works, second time through you get this nil minus one, or this. It's a, there's like several different uh, versions of this error message that I see people always post in the forums. In, in a nutshell, what's occurred is you've destroyed your object and you're trying to manipulate it with a function that's supposed to be there that's not there. So how do we solve this? Solve it by not doing that, first of all. We completely, nev I never call that function. Uh, and I Forgive me, because I know that people are still downloading my templates, and some of my old, old templates still have calls to remove self. Uh, and they were written in the day when Corona did not have another way to do it, but now Corona has, and has had for quite some time, a function called remove, Part, that is part of the display library and basically what this is is a safe call to remove self that says if remove self isn't there do nothing otherwise it calls remove self internally to the library and it functions correctly so we're removing this safely this will never crash you can pass anything in here you want nil no argument uh, a non-existent object it'll still do the right thing the next thing we do is Oh, sorry. Is is there an instance? I don't want to derail too far, but just a yes or no kind of. Is there is there an instance where remove self would be a valid use? No, it's it's definitely valid. It's just dangerous uh, because people don't understand the concept of events. Mm -hmm. when, okay, new developers come into Corona, and they're unclear on how events work. Uh, for example, a big time, a, a big thing where you see this is people use the touch handler. And they, they use touch, but they don't use any of the phases. They don't pay attention to the began, moved, ended phases. They simply use touch like a global catch-all for their touches. And then somewhere in there, they may do a remove. For example, they're doing a game where they're popping balloons or something like that. Yeah. And so on touch, they delete the object using remove self, not realizing that the touch still has at least one more phase to go. It executed on the began, but as soon as they lift their finger, or they don't even have to lift their finger, deleting a display object that's currently being touched will call another phase on the touch. And so if you don't remove the listener, it's going to call it again, 
but because you already called remove self, the next time you try to call it, you crash your game, or you at least get an unhandled exception. I'm just I'm just wondering is is remove self a, a as you said a legacy piece that is still relevant that still needs to be there if it causes this, these types of issues? Just curious. It's one of those things that you can't get rid of because it's okay. core okay. functionality. Uh, that, that's right? it's, the, it's the code that actually does the removal. Uh, without digging deep, yeah, it should stay there because if you remove it, then you'll never have a way to do any object-specific removal. The remove okay. self is object-specific. Yeah, and I think that's where I was, I was getting at was, that, you know, is this sort of an artifact or is this sort of something that's, as you say, you know, essentially you can't really get rid of it. Yeah, you, you essentially can't get rid of it, but it's a stepping, it's a tripping point for, for new people. Okay. That's okay. why I always say in the forums, whenever I see it, don't use that. Don't do that. Call right. display remove. I don't even bother to really explain it anymore. I say don't do that. <laughs> I, I need a, I need a little wave file that goes with my thing so people can can hear me. That don't do that. <laughs> so uh, we dis we call display remove. We're gonna stop tracking the arrow in our list of arrows, which we're not using for anything right now. We will use it for something later. Um, we cancel any transitions on the enemy. So this is kind of redundant because I do this in uh, the other code that we talked about, the self-destruct code. Uh, let's see. Then I also remove the event listener. So I've got some redundant code in here. I should probably just delete. But I'm not going to because every time I do that, I kill the code and goof ourselves up. But what I'm doing in a... Uh, to stop saying in a nutshell. What I am doing in short is stopping the enemy from moving... I'm telling the enemy, don't listen for any more collisions after this point, so don't call your collision handler uh, uh, if you have one. And then I mark the enemy as destroyed. I'm like doing all these things. It's probably a little bit redundant, but I kind of like to do it just in case. And is destroyed, I will use, I could use if I wanted as a flag to say don't do anything more on this. I'm currently not. Part of what you're seeing here is, um, oh, it's a good thing I pointed it out. You're seeing my code in flight. So I think I use the is destroyed and the AI code. I'm just going to verify that now. Let's go take a look. Well, this is this is easily followed code, right? You can self-describe me. Yeah. So here it is. Last week we looked at the AI code, the, our super advanced following AI code. As, as you can see, I have a check for the is destroyed flag. And basically it, it, uh, it doesn't do anything. If this is set to true, it just early aborts. So it's just like my cheater code that I put in there that says, this guy is either being destroyed now or has already been destroyed, so don't do any of this stuff below here. It's gone. Just ignore it and abort. So if for some reason you're still trying to do this, don't do that. Um, <clears throat> I, I guess I should point out, I know we're five minutes past, but it's worth making a note that I make light of this me being kind of lazy, but in reality, um, an event-driven system is sort of, you got to be careful because events come in asynchronously sometimes. That is, you can't guarantee that every event that you care about has already executed by the time you are doing some step in your code. There may be more events coming that are touching an object that you're about to destroy or they are manipulating that object. And so, if you find yourself in a, in a complex situation where on occasion a piece of your code is failing and you know that it's related to you deleting that object, you destroyed the object and a moment later some critical piece of code tried to manipulate it or call a method attached to that object or look at the X and Y position of the object, what you need to do is find the place in your code where you are destroying it. And first of all, look at it and see if there's some way you can get rid of that listener or get rid of that code that's executing. If you can do that, then do it. Remove the listener, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But sometimes you find yourself either not sure that that's the best way to approach it or unable to do that. And so another way to do it, it's sort of cheating, is to do what I'm doing here, which is to use a flag and simply say, if this flag has been set, it's sort of like, I couldn't quite figure it out, or I was too lazy, uh, or whatever. I'll, I'll say I'm too lazy, and we'll say you couldn't figure it out. 
uh, then go ahead and just mark a flag and don't run that code. It's perfectly fine because at the end of the day what you're trying to do is get your game done. You're not trying to have the most perfect code in the world. 